in love with the Benji. Watch me go get it. Try to tell him get a bag, but niggas ain't get it. For all the shit I never had, I'ma go get it. These niggas ain't with me. Remember them days when I ain't have a penny. Remember them days in the slum we were robbing and clutching the city. Yo, dude, what's good, you too, man? This is TL. Welcome back to Stunner ITV, man. If you're a Stunner, this is the place to be, man. You do money to lean on coach this week. Everything's on me, man. And we back at it again. What another? Bang! Hey, guys, what's going on, man? And next up, we got Ross Kemp behind bars. Inside Barlini. I think that's how you say it. So I guess the inside Barlini prison. Um, I did do a little bit of research. You know, as a prison in the UK, you feel me? Um, not really a long-term prison. I think they say um, prisoners with four years or, or less. It's mostly with, uh, what it was? It was like prisoners with four years or less or some shit like that, bro. It's not really like a, you know, but hey, prison is prison. It is what it is. I ain't for the whole job, boys. For the get into this video. If y'all new to the channel here, I'm going to shout out to the video. Make sure y'all comment down below for the video. Don't leave that to next. And make sure y'all please. Yeah, you know, but bro. Let's get added to this video. We got Ross Kemp behind bars inside Barlini. See what the fuck going on, man. Hey, if y'all like these videos, y'all already know. Just let me know down below, bro. Yeah. spending time in one of Britain's most notorious prisons. HMP Barlini in Glasgow. Not saying that, though. I wasn't saying like the prison wasn't like, you feel me? Like, like you don't go down to that shit. I was just saying like, that's what it said. Literally, when you look up the prison, I did, I did, I literally looked up the prison just to make sure I was saying the name right. And that's what it said, bro. It said, it said, People with four years or less go there, but I ain't saying that shit don't happen. That's what that's what it say online, nigga. Look it up yourself. This tough jail has a formidable reputation. To understand what the prisoners go through, I'm going to be admitted like any other inmates. Exclusive access to every part of the prison, and I'll find out what the prisoners really think about Bolin. And learn about the extreme measures prisoners will take to get weapons. That, yeah. so you put that up his ass. Yeah. I'll work with young inmates trapped in a cycle of repeat offending. So amongst you, that's right, it's amongst you. And meet the prisoners who have committed the worst of crimes. That's what you want, you're a murderer. You're a giant one. Locals call it Bar L, the big hoose. I'm going inside Bar Linny. prisoners come through these doors every year from shoplifters to armed robbers from sex offenders to murderers they are all processed here and today i'm going to get exactly the same treatment just get him off the cough please what's your full name ross james Kemp. ross which are the other 21st of the 7th 64. you've been in a scottish prison before no you set that cage here for me the chair is a metal detector. It checks for weapons and mobiles that may be hidden internally. Damn, I never heard of that one before. I didn't even know they had some shit like that. Oh, you can check for your shit in your ass. I, I swear I ain't know nothing about that one. Looking for the camera up in front of you. Everyone had any issues with a self-harm or suicide at all? No. no. Who's your next account? Um, my wife. 
Stand up. We'll take you away, get you out of your own clothes and give you a body search. They've checked my mental well-being. Now it's the strip search. Take your clothes off. Put your arms up and spin around for me. Put that sweater on. Take your underwear off. There you go. Although I'm stripped. Come around for me. I'm relieved. There's no cavity search. Put your shorts back on. Make you walk slowly past this machine for me. Stop. Turn around to face me. And another scanner, so sensitive. Walk forward. It can detect SIM cards from mobiles which are banned. I take a seat there. You'll get over the hole in a minute. Ain't that bad, you know, just coming in. It ain't that bad. You know, a nigga just walking in this bitch. It ain't that bad. I'm just getting in here. You feel me? I ain't even get to the, you feel me? I ain't even get the GP yet. You feel me? It's a busy place. Over a hundred other inmates are being processed today. hundred niggas going to jail. One Everything day. that identifies me, my clothes, my credit cards, my mobile phone, etc., have been taken away from me. Um, I've still got wedding ring on. And I'm keep the wedding ring. You know, it's it's a process, and it's a process that's done to to make sure that I'm not bringing any weapons in. Uh, slightly humiliating, but in the main, they do that process to keep you safe and to keep themselves safe. Right, here you come. I'll take you off to the hall there. Um, can't, ain't no one's coming with the ass like that, my boy. For some, this is a rite of passage as normal as walking to the shops. But for others, this could be the most frightening day of their life. I've yet to find out how intimidating this place really is. Any advice? Just keep your head down, you'll be fine. Just do what the staff tell you. The prison population in the UK has doubled in the last 25 years. Today, there are 100,000 people behind bars. And this all comes at a price. On average, it costs £36,000 to keep a prisoner in jail for a year. It's so crazy how the system works, right? They put you in jail. They make you work in jail, but they don't pay you shit. But they have to pay to keep you in jail. That shit is so crazy, right? Like, they don't pay them shit, but they got to pay for them to be in jail. I, that shit weird. But the big question for me has to be, what are prisons about? Are they there to contain people, keep dangerous people away from the rest of society? Are they there to rehabilitate or are they there to punish? That's a good question. Barlini has a dark history. Ten men have gone to the gallows behind its stone walls. The Lockerbie bomber was imprisoned here. And today, the jail runs on strict routine. And part of that routine is work. <laughs> Make niggas work. The prisoners will be taken out of their cells, walk downstairs, they'll go through the metal detector, and then they'll be taken along the route to uh, the various places where they work. And work's important in a prison because not only is it where they're earning money, it's also getting people who may have never actually worked into the habit of doing something, going to work. All convicted prisoners have to work. And for my first shift, I'm going to the prison kitchen. 
40 men work here, many of them violent offenders. And each earns £12 a week for cutting, carving and cooking meals for the 1,100 inmates. So three and a half thousand meals are made here every day at a cost of 83 pence per meal. This place is full of potential weapons. Knives, boiling water, hot soup. And though working here is a privileged position, there is always the potential for violence. Can we get a spatula on the knife, please? Can do. So, they're locked up. Aye, uh, all the sharps are locked up. And the case, 17. Cheers, thank you. Oh, well, there's a t you he asks you for your number, why is that? I'm in charge of this, basically. If somebody gets assaulted with it, it's down to me. Down to you? Aye, uh, it's down to me, mm -hmm. obviously. Keep it beside us and make sure it doesn't get used in Sunday. Wow. Then I'm using it. Right. Mark is serving seven years for attempted murder. What did you originally do to get sentenced? I stabbed that boy. Really? Aye. Aye. What with? A knife. Not like that one. Aye. Does it make you feel funny when you pick it up? I just don't, I don't like knives now, man. I don't carry them. I used to carry one every day. When I was out there, because the people I was jumping about me always carried, so I thought it was... That's what you do. I, I thought that was, that's all right, man, you carry a knife, because all my pals were doing it. But I carried it and used it one day, and it changed my life. Changed someone else's life as well? Changed somebody else's life, aye. Yeah, I mean, how badly did you attack him? Really bad. Really, really bad. But you're not the only person that's in this prison for using one of these, though, are you? No, there's hundreds of people in here for using these. Man. Is it like born and off? The prison is run on rules under the ever watchful eye of the prison officers. But it's also run on other rules made by the inmates. I want to find out what they are. So I've come to the exercise yard where I'm meeting Hugh. He has a history of violence and has done a few stints in Balini. Here, if we stand over here, mate. So, this is exercise, yeah? Uh, is that, that's how it's made. What are the do's and don'ts of prison life? Definitely don't fucking grass on anybody. Nah, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's one thing. Keep your mouth shut, nah, I mean. And don't grumble, don't, don't walk about, nah, I mean, staring at people, nah, give I mean, it hard, uh, give it the hard, man. Just, but people will just punch you right out your trainers in here, mate. Yeah. I mean, that's, ah, this is bullying, mate. Yeah. This guy can kick off in two minutes, mate. Yeah. Aye, mate, it's, it's, it's happening happen a heartbeat, mate. Nah, I mean, everything will be nice and calm, mate, before you get out, mate. It's, it's on about the ground. Boxing. You know what I mean? People getting slashed in that. People get slashed in that. Aye. It's a dangerous show to be in this. You know what I mean? It's not a violent thing to be in, especially for a first offender, mate. Look at it, mate. It's a fucking bear pit, mate. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of like that in every prison. You feel me? Just yeah. got Hugh describes this place as a bear pit. It is incredibly dangerous and stressful, both for the prison officers and for the inmates themselves. But it's one thing to fall out with the prison officers here. But if you fall out with the other inmates, your life becomes a living hell. Keeping prisons safe is no easy task. And jails across the country have been struggling to contain trouble. In 2016, violence in Britain's prisons hit record levels, with over 20,000 prisoner on prisoner attacks and over 7,000 assaults on staff. Damn. Did you say considerable? In Balini, the security and intelligence unit are on the front line 
in the battle to keep order in the jail. So what have we got here, Steve? This is our selection of weapons that we've actually retrieved All through right. searches and that sort of thing. These are quite ingenious. These were made in here by prisoners. Also, this one here yeah, was nice. made in the joiner shed using a bit of perspex. They've also used one of our power tools to grind it in the shape. I mean, that's a killer. That and you can't detect it. This type of weapon is very common. Basically what this is, is a razor blade. And what they do is they make three layers on it. So when they slash you, because it can't stick to your left with a big scar. Wow. You can see that there's three blades there. So that's a safety razor that's been dismantled and it's been melted into the end of that. But yeah. well, that's, that's a life-changing injury, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. And again, staff have to think, as prisoners as well, we have to think about these things. <laughs> Not all weapons are made in jail. Some are smuggled in using extreme measures. And one of these extreme measures is called banking. Let's look at an example. This was actually something that came with us banked. Bank yeah. that? Yeah. That? Yeah. You're kidding me. No. Well, look at the length of it. And look at the point on it. So you put that up his arse. Yep. Uh -huh. There's no cavity check. We don't do cavity checks. It's routine now. And it's actually amazing what people can secrete. Really? Man buying Damn. It. You know, being in the prison a short period of time, there's a feeling that everything is calm, but beneath it... It's like tension. It's under calm, I do. Yeah, and I'm beginning to see it. Yeah, it's like tension under type shit. Like, you know, it's, it feels like it's calm, but it's hella tension. Like, you can feel that shit. Like... Since 2014, over 700 weapons have been seized in Scottish prisons. And that's not the only thing Stevie's on the lookout for. That is a real phone, right? That's a real phone. It's, people ask us, why can't we stop phone going in the prison? Well, that's a big phone now. We can get a smaller one now. That's about half the thickness of that. Really? Yeah. That'll resale when I go on eBay, get it for 20 quid. 600 quid for it in here. Wow. 600 pounds for a phone. Yeah. It's more lucrative than the drug dealer. Any smartphone, so we get you two grand. Or an iPhone, that sort of thing. Do you ever find that there are people that intentionally put themselves into prison? I think they do. You'll get people who have been on HTC, so that's home detention curfew. Right. So they're coming to the end of it. Yeah, they're getting a tag. Yeah. Then they'll breach it with a couple of days to go and they'll come in banked. Right. And. Oh, you banked full of drugs, basically. Full of drugs, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's there for them to sell when they're in. And make any amounts of money out of it. How much? I mean, you can literally make thousands. I mean, the sky's on it, really. Mm. From metal detectors to specialist sensors, the prison has a number of ways of finding weapons, mobiles, and drugs. But with no cavity it. search, some prisoners succeed in smuggling them in. And it's not the only way inmates can get their hands on drugs. You've had a lot of throwovers yeah. recently. How does he actually get over the... Basically, it's as simple as using... Uh, doing those things for throwing a ball for a dog. Look, yeah, the, the wooden thing. thing. Yeah. Like, like a boomerang. Yeah. They'll stand yeah. at the bottom of the hill, near the flats, just outside the jail, and they'll just launch them right in there. Wow. I need a savage. It's a package shape like that. It's quite aerodynamic. And once you're in, people either pick it up or they'll cause a distraction to pick it up. What could be in the package? Street Valley, recently. A lot of Street Valley. You can have anything up to 230 Valley in that. How much is that worth it? So well, point. outside the prison, it's a pound or a tablet in here, up to five times that per tablet. What's the most ingenious way you've ever ever seen or ever witnessed? Really ingenious. They were using clothing. So we're, there's a performer where people can get shorts, pants, that sort of thing. And he's in. Sent. Sent in from the family. Yeah. Family, yeah, family, friends. And what they were actually doing was making a solution up with things like Valium, they put it on, let it dry. When you bring it in, you strain it in a tea and you can drink it and get the same kick as you would get between the tower. How did you first detect that? We get it through intelligence. Across the country, a third of inmates test positive for illegal drugs when leaving prison. Valium, heroin, and the increasing use of new psychoactive substances known as illegal highs or spice are all in demand. 
Stevie has received a tip off that a prisoner has smuggled drugs, and I'm joining the search. He's going back to jail. Uh, these guys are saying, uh, for obvious reasons, they are possibly the most unpopular officers in this prison. Uh, you know, for many of the prisoners, the only way of getting through the week is to sometimes take drugs, and uh, these guys stop them from doing that. I want to find out how the prisoner is going to react when we turn up at his cell door. The bag you have to ask me, right? Take your boxes off from it. Prison officer Stevie and his team have received intelligence that a prisoner has smuggled drugs into Balini. Not even the officers on duty in the hall know that this search is going to take place. The inmate who they suspect of having drugs, he has a history of it, he's walked back from having his hair cut to find the security team here. He's now decided he needs to go to the toilet. Now, they have an issue. In terms of his human rights, I'm not sure that they can actually witness what he's about to do. Hey, there's a lady on the other side of the bandit. Any sharks? Right. We're going to give you a voice to see that from the right. So, give you your t shirt off first. Right, you take the boxers off from it, just hand them up to me. Squad doing as far as you can for me. Right, the squat on the way down. Do the fuck up that. Right, that's right. Right, if you see it inside the chair, just watch what I'm doing. In there. Is it not a case that, you know, as soon as you discover, oh, it could be in the bottom of the telly, then they stop putting it in the bottom of the telly? Because yeah, someone's found out it's gone around the yard. I'll move again, but there's not always, because it's a good hiding place. It is. You can always check the cards. Really? Why? Some cards. Sim card. You get some cards, the memory cards, some of the other cards. Stuck in the pack. Right. One of the best ones is peanut butter. Because it's thick. A phone, a phone inside the peanut butter. Inside plastic. Right inside so, the plastic container. Yeah. But what made you suspicious that it might be in the thing? Oh, it's just one of these things, you know, you get an intuition. You just got an intuition, you think. Where was I hiding? <laughs> Is that how you think? I don't know what that says on the ear. Take the ball. And then. Not for the phone in there before. See the wee Bluetooth ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is basically what a plumber uses, right? That is, yeah. Just see what's in behind the unit there. Yeah. So, Jim, when you do find something, is it like a fisherman catching a fish? What's it feel like? You have, you've done your job. Hey, guys, who's this, Tom? Hey! Hey, boys, that's us. All right, we'll take that up, easy. Easy. That search took the best bit of an hour and a half, and while the officers didn't find anything, they've said to me that they learned a bit of intel. And the inmate, to be fair, said, look, I've only been in a week, give me some time. And in the past, he has had mobile phones and drugs in his cell. There's this continuous game of cat and mouse. No matter what precautions you take to stop drugs coming in to a prison, they'll always get in because of the demand and because of the profit to be made. Through that. That's the thing, bro. People always say criminals dumb. But criminals low key criminals low key smart as hell, bro. They need to be coming up with the most creative ways to get what the fuck they want. Like they just dumb as to thinking it all the way through. Like coming up with the plan, but they don't think it all the way through. Like
are caught with drugs or weapons, they are sent to a disciplinary hearing. I've been given special permission to sit in with duty governor Phil. I think they respect the order within the respect the prison rules. They know they're there. The punishments dished out include loss of TV, withdrawal of recreation and cash fines. And if things are more serious, the police get involved and time can be added to a sentence. There's a copy of the prison rules there. The oh, if, you, if you need them, OK? Sure. You understand the charge and the purpose of the game? Yes. Are you ready to go ahead with it? Aye. How do you plead? No, I'll be. It's no, it's no mine, not me. OK, play of not guilty. I'll read out the charge. You did have in your possession the thin cell 308, a homemade pipe used for smoking illegal, illegal substances, and when questioned, admitted to smoking can, a bit of cannabis. I said to him, I, if I was going to smoke it, it'd be a bit of hash. Not mean I never said to him, I smoked a bit right. of hash. Can you identify that as the, the item we're talking about? I've never seen that before. I've never seen that before, man. So nobody showed you? No, I've never seen it. Not identified, OK? So you can't identify that? It's, it's, it's no mine, not mean. The fact that you identify that as being the, the, the offending article aye. doesn't mean you're guilty. Aye, aye. So if you I say have seen me, it, I have seen, seen it. it. I have seen it before, but it's no... At the start, right. I so, showed me... So we've been, got somewhere. No, you you do recognise that, is that fair? I've seen it before, so right? We can That's identify it. that as being the item that we're talking about aye. in here. Aye, aye. That's good. Right. Yeah, somewhere now. <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic what happened in the cell, right. okay? Cool. It's not the worst crime in the world. Officer comes to your door and he says to you, you've been taking spice. No, a wee bit of hash, right. okay? The thing we minimising it, a wee bit of hash. Right, cool. Is that fair? Aye, that's exactly what it says, aye. Right, right. That's, we've moved a long way for you. Right, cool. Nothing happened. Let's get to the charge. Guilty, no guilty. Just guilty. Would you like to change it to a young man? Aye, just go away and get out of You sure? I'm choked for a roll up one. Going to give you 14 recreation for your honesty. Aye, sir. OK. That's OK. He said I wouldn't say no to a piece of hash. Aye. And then he became, well, I might have had some hash. Yeah. Yes, I did have some hash. Yes. So we got there eventually. <laughs> 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 Pretty fair to him. He's only young. He's got yeah. family as well. So he's got a child, you know, and he wants to speak to them. And you could deny him access yeah, to that. Absolutely. Him by taking his money away. What you've yeah. done is denied him access to rec. To the recreation association with people. Losing 14 recreation means no snooker, no chatting That's with me. mates for a fortnight. And to my mind, not too high a price to pay for yeah, using that. drugs. I don't care about that. You can have that, boss man. I'm here to take that. For some men here, the cost of drug use is huge. Pushing back their chance of freedom, not by days, but by years. And in a corner of Balini, I'm going to meet one of these men. He's held in a separate facility called the National Top End. Most inmates here are serving a minimum of 10 years, and several men have been in prison for over 40. Oh, okay, so it's two sides to that shit. Oh, okay, that, that's kind of cool, that's kind of cool. I, I, get, I get it now, I get it. Well, that's it, it's kind of big though. Okay. The inmate who wants to remain anonymous killed a family member over allegations of domestic abuse. Originally serving a life sentence with a 12 year minimum, he's now served. 18 years behind bars. Why have you served so much time? Right. It's drug tests. I mean, I'm, I'm an addict. You'd never taken heroin until you got to prison? No. The main reason why we started taking heroin was because the cannabis stays in your system for up to 28 days, but with heroin, 
Jeg søger så med free days. So when they actually tested you during the week, Nej. you'd be clean. Nej. Nej. Did you take it to to effectively remove yourself from prison for a bit? If you're if you're high, you're not here, are you? Why? Was that why? That's exactly why. It's hard to wrap your head around a life sentence. Just take the heroin and it just blanks everything, blanks your emotions, blanks your thought patterns. You line up days, weeks, months, it turns into years. But each time you got caught taking it, they added more into your tariff. Aye. Aye. Going back to it, you know, you say that you, you get this sentence, it's life. You know, you kill someone. Mm-hmm. That's right, aye. Regrets. Aye. I'm asking the parole board now, please let me out. I've passed my 12-year punishment, but I've done another severe on top of that. I've changed. I will not commit another crime. Please give me that second chance. But I never give that guy a second chance. So it's all regret. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Do you think then that you have been rehabilitated? I don't know about rehabilitation, but I definitely think different. I don't know if that's because I'm older now, mm. or if it's through the result of the offending behaviour program that I've done. But it seems to be irrelevant because as drugs I'm getting kept in from me. What about while you've been in here? What what were the darkest moments for you? Personally, my darkest time was when you realise yourself that what you're when you come face to face yourself properly. To come to terms with the worst kind of person and understand that that's you. And it's cost you nearly 20 years of your life. And his life. Aye. Mm. He's served 12 years for murder. But his heroin addiction has cost him another six. And he's not the only one paying a price for his drug use. His extra time in jail will have cost the taxpayer around £200,000. And that's a heavy price to pay for everyone. In 1987, one of the worst riots in British prison history happened at Bolivia. Inmates took control of the roof and five prison officers were taken hostage. Damn. Since then, prison officers have worked hard to keep a lid on this pressure cooker of a prison. find out how they keep discipline when they are outnumbered and outmuscled. Yeah, look here. So Danny, you got a lot of likes here. So yes. Quite strong lads. Bit of adrenaline pumping inside them. Someone yeah. knocks into someone. You've got a lot of weapons here. Potentially lethal weapons. Yeah. How do you keep a lid on it? Yeah, I'm 29 on the job, right. so experience is very important. Not everything, but it is important. In general, you can find you've got a feel of the gym and a feel of the class, how it's going, psychology is everything. Generally, we've got three staff in here before it's two prisoners. You're outnumbered. Three staff, doesn't matter who you are, can you control what to do? So, gymnasium is running the good relations between staff and prisoners. Without the goodwill of the prisoners, 
prison's not wrong. Well, if we didn't have the good will, prisoners, prisons would be a lot tighter regimes. Because yeah. the staff will always stay in control of the prisons. Or they should stay in control. Yes, we do have instances, especially in England right now, yeah. there's loads of in uh, instances yeah. and they're losing control. Danny, I've noticed why you've been talking to me. Your head is continuously monitoring everything that everyone does. Well, I've got to turn that around. Can you punch the bag with two bag match on? Me, man! Don't punch the bag! Don't punch the bag! Don't punch it behind your hand! Yeah? Big sign, big sign! Big sign, right. Not the brightest. Do very, very firm, but very fair. That's for job. That is what you'll them, them, re educate them, re whatever you want to say. But the bottom line is, guys make mistakes and they're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Generally, you find as they get older and they get wiser, if they don't succumb to the, the perils of drugs and crime and get shot or something, generally, you find once they meet a good woman, once they've done their third long term sentence, out of they realise. What am I doing here? Danny seems optimistic that a lot of guys, given time, will get back on the straight and narrow. However, there are a few prisoners here that some argue just can't be rehabilitated. Yes, it's everywhere. I've been in Balini some time now, and I've been into every hall apart from one, and that's E Hall. That's where the sex offenders are kept. They're kept separate from the other inmates. In fact, the other inmates refer to them as beasts. They account for one fifth of the prison population here in Balini. And across Scotland, they're the fastest growing prison population. Honestly, I'm not looking forward to going in there. E Hall holds up to 280 sex offenders. Mm. That's four times as many as a decade ago. An increasing number are older, convicted of historic sex abuse. And some have even died here. The oldest sex offender is 89 years of age and needs carers to come in twice a day. One inmate has agreed to talk to me on the basis we hide his identity and disguise his voice. He's serving time for downloading indecent images of children. Is it your first offence? Uh, no, it's not. It's my third offence for similar things. If you know that you will be punished for doing what you do, looking at indecent pictures of children, why do you carry on doing it? Because I'm an idiot, basically. Uh, I don't know. It's very difficult to explain to myself why I did it, but I thought I'd get away with it, I suppose. I don't know, you what? Do you think you can be rehabilitated? No. No. Do you win the sense of cure? Mm. I don't think I will offend again. I'm pretty sure I won't offend again. In that sense, yes. Uh, but you can't be cured of your your feelings for children. No, I'm sure not. You're sure not. Yeah. Does that not make you a threat to society, to children? No, I didn't before I committed this offence. Um, or do you not think that the children that are in those images that you see are being forced? to doing the things that you like to look at? Um, I honestly want to keep an open mind on that because uh, some of them, I think, seem to quite enjoy it. And, you know, You're telling me that the children in those images are enjoying themselves? themselves? Yes, some of them, I think. Man, get the fuck out of here, bro. What the fuck? Bro, I, I, I really wanted to know what niggas like that think. And that's crazy that they actually think like that, bro. That's so freaking crazy, bro. You seriously think that you should be allowed out of prison? 
Oh, nigga. I just don't see what harm I would do outside. Well, you don't think there's any harm being done to those children the pictures? Well, when you like to get now, but I would accept that I have done harm, which is why I'm here. Okay. Basically, I think that's it. Thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. All right, nigga, what are you talking about? You release me, please. Yeah, I don't even wanna I don't even wanna talk no more, y'all dumbass niggas, cause that's just stupid. Like what? Like I like bro, you just a goofy ass nigga, bro. Oh, yes. You have to question why someone who enjoys looking at indecent images of children Kids. being forced to have sex is not a threat That's to lovely. society, nice. especially when you know he will be out of prison very soon. Yeah. I found that disturbing. So and I can't disturbing, help but bro. think how difficult it must be for prison officers to work with sex offenders every day. Donna has agreed to talk to me. That's crazy. Do you read their case files? I've read the trial judge reports and narratives and stuff from the court, which are very descriptive on the crimes um, and obviously their, their backgrounds and stuff. So I have done that. Huh? Does that bother you? Does that change the way that you, you think about them? No, it, it, it's hard. It does affect you, obviously, because there's some things that you'd rather You've read, I've read that I would rather not have read and, you know, you don't want that imprint in your head, but it doesn't, when you're in here working with them, you're in doing a job, so it's not something that you, you genuinely don't think about it. Also, there, there are rapists in here, mm -hmm. and you're a woman. I know there's rapists in here, I know there's people who would sexually offend against somebody my age or any of the other females, and even the males in here, the male officers, but it's not something that you come in every day and you think, I'm getting here to work with them these sex offenders who could potentially attack me. I mean, they're in but, close proximity to you. Yeah. Uh -huh. They obviously can't control their urges towards women. No, uh -huh. no. I think you are very brave. I don't know. I think it probably takes a certain type of person to come in and definitely work in, work in an environment like this, a female and a male as well. Yeah. But I, I suppose, I, yeah, you could say the staff that come in are, are brave. She is. I call her. I ain't gonna cash. She probably the realest one in there, bro. I ain't even gonna cash. She probably the realest officer in there, bro. For real. I fuck with her. Cause she a G. And you could tell she like kinda in pain. Cause when she was talking, like you could tell, like you, she feel that shit. Like, like, yeah, like, but like generally, I don't even think about it. Like, hey, she a G, man. I fuck with her for real. I spoke to a sex offender earlier and one thing that one of the officers came up and said to me quite openly, he said, how did it go? And I said, well, that was, uh, it was shocking to talk to someone that was so open and explicit about their views. Yeah particularly towards children. And he said, you've got to remember that there are other people locked up in here that have done far worse things, unspeakable things. Yeah, no matter like that. surprised by what I've seen here. I've met hard cases, I've met desperate cases, and I've met sad cases. But there's one thing that unites many of them. One day, they will be free. Hey, dear boys. My final stop is the barbers. I'm not coming for my haircut. <laughs> where ten prisoners are employed to cut inmates' hair. 
and it's the chance to do a job I did a long time ago. My mum was a hairdresser, so that's what I did when I was a kid anyway. So yeah, that's my job. I should be sticking it on my head. <laughs> Kevin has previous convictions for attempted murder and assault. And I want to know if he's finally turned his back on a life of crime. I've changed. I've got kids in order. How much do you miss your kid? I think of my son every single day and it just breaks my heart to think that I'm not part of his life in it. How old is he? He's 16, 17 months old. He was born in January. Uh, what about liberation? What's it feel like? It's the best feeling in the world. Aye, <laughs> 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 the best feeling in the world, aye. You can't beat it. It's, aye, it's, it's a feeling that you'll never forget. So the first thing you want is to go and see your missus and have time here. You've missed out in your sexual life for you, so... So I think you should... Aye, but it is. That's the first thing we own people's minds, really. Yeah. They're sexually frustrated in here, some people are. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you see some boys are like, Jesus Christ, man. But, but it's but also, you look at the age group, I mean, how old are you? I'm 26. I'm 31. Right, but see, I can say this, you're young guys. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? This is the time that you should be out there. Right. This is the time yeah. for disco dancing. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Liberation is a happy day for most prisoners, but for some repeat offenders, I can't help thinking it's just part of a cycle. Stand the grab liberation, please. Robert is finishing a seven-month stretch for breach of the peace and breaking his community payback order. Liberation day. Choking again. Bye bye. Wait, but get a bad rail. Stop playing with him. First time we've ever been in prison. No. It's like a revolving door for me, but I can, I can only try and stay up. How many times do you think you've I've lost Kevin? You've lost Kevin? Aye. Over five? Aye, over five. Last count. Aye. It costs the taxpayer around £3,000 a month to keep a prisoner in jail. That makes the bill for Robert's seven month stay £21,000, which is more than a young prison officer earns in a year. I don't get it. I can't help thinking there has to be a cheaper and better way of punishing and rehabilitating revolving door prisoners like him. I don't get it, bro. Much better than <laughs> Much better. Much better than And then that's what I'm with me. And so, go and see my wife and get him sorted. Good luck. No problem. I'll just stay up. So they are. <laughs> Cheers, man. Only a few weeks after I met Robert, I was told he has outstanding charges. Sadly, his freedom is once again uncertain. Damn, nigga. I don't think it was going to be good. I'm smiling and shit. Like, he good. Most of the prisoners I've met are stuck in a cycle of life in and out of jail. I want to know what, if anything, can be done to break that cycle. And the one person who may have an answer is the governor. The prison population has doubled mm -hmm. in the last 25 years. What can be done to stop that trend? Send less people to prison. Mm -hmm. That's the, the easiest answer. We send a lot of people to very short sentences um, and we effectively can't do very much. In fact, it probably causes more harm. They lose their tenancy, they could lose their job, they lose connection with their family, or it adversely affects yeah. their connection with their family. So sending people for short periods of time in custody is probably not rehabilitative or helpful at all. But there yeah. are like people who do like, you know, days, like people who do days, weeks, like stupid shit, months even. Like if a nigga ain't getting 
two years, at least two years, bro. Like, man, don't be, you feel me? Yeah, I should, yeah, shit should just be like a ticket type shit, like. And prison is about punishing people, is it? I would rather it was about changing people. But we know that there are so many revolving door prisoners out there, not just coming back to Barney, but prisons across the United Kingdom. Do prisons really work? I think they do for some people. We can make it work for those we have here for a bit of time, for those that are just in and out. It's, it's a pointless exercise. And somebody once said to me that prisons should be there f for the people that we're afraid of, who are dangerous, and not for the ones we're annoyed at. Mm. So. I like that. I like that. I like that saying. That was a good saying right there. I like that. I'm still not sure if prisons work, but I have discovered the financial cost and the human cost of jail. And I've learned a lot. There are definitely people here who should remain here because of the threat that they pose to others. And there are some who are here because of one awful mistake that has changed their lives and other people's lives forever. Sadly, there are some who call this place home because they have nowhere else to go. <laughs> But the vast majority are repeat offenders, trapped in a cycle of substance abuse, violence, and criminality. And while some of those don't want to change, there are some here that do. And what I found from the prisoners here is that the only person that can truly change them is themselves. My question is, are we doing our best to encourage this change to happen? Mm. All right, Ross Kemp, man. That was a good one, bro. Hey, but y'all let me know, man. Y'all like these videos, man. I check out some more, bro. I really fuck with it. So I think I might just check out some more, bro. But anyways, that's it for this video. Y'all make sure y'all leave a like on the video. Make sure y'all comment down below for the video y'all make to next. And make sure y'all please hit the subscribe button, bro. We out, man. It's on my TV.